our working day in the UCMC. The topic of the next press conference is uh, the announcement of the conference organized by the Embassy of Belgium in Ukraine and the Diplomatic Academy of Ukraine. Marcel Thierry, the Belgian Armored Car Corps in Ukraine and the perception of the First World War in Ukraine and Belgium. Our speakers are uh, His Excellency Luc Jacobs, uh, Ambassador of Belgium in Ukraine, Jean Delanois, representative of the Embassy of Belgium in Ukraine, Michel Jupard, Director of the Institute of Veterans in Belgium, Lucien Nule, writer, and Dmitro Chistiak, representative of the Tarashevchenko National U University. All the speakers will be speaking English, uh, with the exception of Dmitro, who will be speaking Ukrainian and he will be translating also the message of uh, Mr. Nullier, who will be speaking French. Valentin, good morning to, to everybody. Uh, we are indeed uh, here to present to you um, a program of, of different events that the Embassy of Belgium is, is organizing in commemoration of the First World War, and more precisely, a conference that will take place uh, tomorrow in the Diplomatic Academy and that we are organizing uh, together in cooperation with uh, the Diplomatic Academy. But why all this attention to the First World War? The First World War was a devastating conflict for all nations uh, involved, but it was especially also the case uh, for Belgium and Ukraine. And in Belgium, since um, 2014 already, uh, uh, quite a number of uh, commemorative events uh, are being organized. Uh, and at the same time, um, the Belgian diplomatic missions abroad are encouraged as well to, to organize uh, events in their respective countries of accreditation. And in uh, Ukraine, uh, in the course of this year, 2016, uh, we present um, a whole series, very varied series of, of events. It is about exhibitions, it's about film screenings, it is about conferences, it is about literary events, and it is about music. Uh, my deputy, Jean de Lanois, will in a, a minute give more detail about this uh, rich program. I just would like to, to make a, a general uh, comment. Uh, in, in um, when we we organize these uh, events commem commemorating common pages uh, of history, it is, uh, and we speak more specifically about the turn of the 19th and the 20th century. It is as if not only we uh, rediscover uh, history, but also we rediscover uh, ourselves. Um, uh, commemorating the First World War and what it meant for Belgium, what it meant for Ukraine, and what it meant for Belgium in Ukraine is a sort of an eye-opener for Ukrainians and, and Belgians uh, alike. Uh, we speak about uh, pages of history that for too long in Ukraine have been have been hidden, have been occulted, have been were not known because they were not part of a sort of a particular uh, biased and, and distorted narrative uh, of history. But now all these pages of history come into the open. And as I said, Ukrainians do rediscover pages of their own history. And in the process, they discover other European countries and also, and especially so, uh, Belgium. Uh, indeed, in the premises of the Ukrainian uh, Ukraine uh, Crisis Media Center, uh, we have uh, just opened uh, last week this uh, beautiful exhibition about the huge Belgian uh, investments in the Donbas at the turn of the 19th and the 20th century. So that is uh, for you and for us an opportunity to rediscover this common past. Uh, this uh, process of rediscovery also works for Belgians because commemorating the First World War uh, in Belgium, uh, 
means that we rediscover other countries that were involved uh, of, um, in this conflict and that also suffered its uh, devastating effects. And so we have this uh, captivating uh, page of history about this Belgian army unit that was deployed to the Galician front in 1916. That was after uh, the Bolshevik Revolution was withdrawn to uh, Kiev while awaiting its repatriation uh, to, to Belgium. But being in Kiev, these uh, soldiers have witnessed uh, quite dramatic uh, moments of, of Ukrainian history in 1917, in the winter 1917, 1918, and also that we are presenting to the Ukrainian public in an exhibition that is taking place in the uh, St. Michael's Monastery. Uh, for me to summarize all this, I would say, uh, commemorating history, rediscovering pages of history is about the following. It is about better understanding a shared past which allows us to be able to grasp the, the true meaning of our common destiny. Thank you so much. The next one is the representative of the Embassy of Belgium. Build upon what the ambassador was saying, because indeed the, it may seem so far to speak today of the First World War and to organize many events. But the very reason we have been able to organize all those events is the enthusiasm on both sides, on Belgian side, but also on Ukrainian side, when we started presenting the narrative of um, those Belgian soldiers who were here in Ukraine, and it was a very special unit, very advanced for its time. It was armored cars, but they also went on to a very special trip coming back um, through Siberia and America. And they were very special people. Um, they were politici future politicians, um, uh, athletes, world champions, and also a um, writer who became very important in Belgium, which and who will be introduced by um, later speakers. But so, um, little by little, our program grew because we had cooperations from Belgium, Mr. Jopa from the Res uh, Research Institute of the Army or Veteran Institute, um, developed an, an exhibition on that unit. But in, in, in Ukraine, we had uh, partners like uh, Dmitro Chistiak, who translated a novel about Kyiv written by Marcel Thierry, this author. And um, somebody from the Belgian side, another example, Mr. Noulet, he, has, he comes now to Kiev to present a novel, his own book about his grandfather who fought in the First World War, and he will present it later today at five o'clock at the St. Thomas Institute in uh, Yerika uh, Street. Um, but he is also um, a, a very um, he is also a great fan of Thierry, and so he will in, he will tell you why Thierry is important in Belgium. While um, Dmitro will uh, tell you why Thierry um, has so many things that appeal to Ukrainians today. So um, to sum up, we have um, a very rich program. We have um, an exhibition about the Belgian armored car unit, Brunier Division. We have an exhibition on the uh, pers Belgian perspective on, on the First World War. The first exhibition is in the um, Mikhailivsky Monastery. The second one is in the mini Museum of, the, of Military History, which is near Mikhailivsky Park, not the one um, with the big statue. And we have the, a very big conference tomorrow that we organized uh, together with the Diplomatic Academy, which brings historians and writers and a specialist of literature from Belgium and from Ukraine. We have also been uh, surprised by the enthusiastic response of so many Ukrainian historians and literary specialists, and they will speak about the um, relation between Ukraine and Belgium, but also what the First World War means for Ukraine, what the First World War means for Belgium, what uh, could be the implications today. Um, we have an, an, an interesting event for young people who are um, studying French today in Ukrainian universities. There is a competition of 
a translation of poems of, of uh, Marcel Thierry. If you want to participate, you have to send an email to an address tabu 5 dot um, at mail dot or you and the, um, the first prize is a week in an a castle in Belgium which is a, um, a, a college of translators so the, the first the, the winner of the competition will be able to work with translators of Belgium literature from the whole world and meet Belgian writers and w work further on uh, translation projects um, as I said, the program is very rich. We also have concerts. We have a concert um, of music by the Ukrainian composer Huba that will be on 31st of March in, in, um, in um, the uh, house of the actor in Kiev. And it will be songs of, uh, 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 composed on Ukrainian translation of Belgian poems, and Dmitro here again is the translator. And finally, we have um, another series of concerts in different places in Ukraine, including small towns that do not often get um, events organized by embassies, uh, like uh, Glukiv and Tratsianets, and that will be concert um, of music from the time of the First World War, evoking the world that was lost um, when the First World War st um, started and destroyed a whole civilization. But now I would like to uh, give the floor to um, Mr. Noulet, who will speak in French, but uh, Dmitro Chisiak will translate, and he will tell you who was Marcel Thierry and why he is still important for a Belgian writer like him today. Merci, Monsieur Lanoué. Excusez-moi de ne parler qu'en français. Mon nom. I'm sorry, I will be speaking French because unfortunately my English is not very good and Ukrainian is just at the very first stage of uh, learning. It's interesting, but it could be so that Marcel Thierry will get back to Belgium only thanks to Ukrainian, Ukraine and Ukrainian readers. Unfortunately, the name of Marcel Thierry is almost forgotten in Belgium. Uh, when I was young, it was one of the most famous Belgian writers. So most of the writers of my generation met with him. Unfortunately, I haven't met him. Why I believe that uh, he is one of the greatest writers is because uh, he combines uh, uh, outstanding realism and the depth of poetic uh, of poetry. In Belgium, this direction is called magic realism, or poetic realism, and uh, the writers uh, were depicting the feeling of the reality in which uh, you can see a different reality, uh, fantasy reality, but in our today's life. The famous uh, poet Surreali Surrealist uh, was saying that Marcel Thierry is one of the most outstanding poets of uh, contemporary times. And the problem with Marcel Thierry was that he unfortunately stayed in Belgium. He did not move to Paris.
However, the period after the First World War, in that period the French uh, poets were uh, highly appreciating Belgium writers in France. There is such an expression about Belgians, small Belgians, But during the First World War, that uh, uh, attitude to Belgiums changed because during eight days, a small Belgian army was fighting for Liege Fort. That was like David versus Goliath. Uh, but uh, Marcel Thierry uh, uh, was uh, uh, did not choose to make up his career in Paris. But he wanted to be involved into trading timber. In the evenings that night, he was working, uh, composing the poetry. And uh, I am uh, pleased because uh, I am not so much interested in the success of the writer, but I'm interested in the quality of his uh, works. And this daily work of Marcel Thierry, when every morning he would go by car, he would buy and sell timber, he was doing some uh, certain things, was taking care of his family. All that was feeding up his uh, inspiration, his method of magic realism. Uh, Marcel Thierry was published in small publishing houses in Belgium. He was a famous writer in a small country, Belgium, but we do hope that thanks to you, thanks to the translation into Ukrainian, his name will get back to Belgium and he will again become a famous uh, Belgian writer. And that is why I am um, so much excited to participate in today's activities because I can say something about the writer who I believe to be one of the most outstanding uh, creators of European literature of the 20th century. That was uh, Monsieur Lucien Nullet and now Michel Jupar, director of the Institute of Veterans in Belgium. Good morning to all. Um, I'm very glad to be here today because uh, it's um, a nice consecration of our work in Belgium. Um, I, I will tell you some words about our institute, which has been created in 1919, just after the First World War, to help uh, war veterans, war victims, war invalids, and to uh, protect them in uh, the difficulties of, the, of their life. Uh, today, uh, we have three main missions. We pay health care to this kind of people, especially, of course, people of the Second World War, because there is no more uh, people of the First World War alive. 
uh, we give them social help if it's necessary. And the third one, and that's why I'm here today, uh, we express uh, memory, remembrance of what they did and what they suffer. And may, maybe more important for why they do that and for what kind of value uh, they fought in the past, especially, of course, freedom, uh, democracy, uh, respect of human rights, uh, and things like that. Our activities on these fields are various, of course. Uh, we made exhibition, and those uh, we present you today uh, in Ukraine yeah, is uh, clearly specially dedica dedicated to uh, this part of a shared history between uh, Belgium and Ukraine, but we made also a lot of other exhibitions about, for example, uh, deportation and genocides, which is about the two types of Nazi crimes, the political uh, deportation, but also the racist ex mass extermination. Um, our idea is that memory uh, must not be only to pay tribute to the victims or to the heroes, but also to build bridges between people, uh, to avoid that history uh, uh, begin, uh, begin one more. And for example, we have an exhibition about resistance in Europe. Uh, we present resistance in 21 countries, resistance mainly against fascism, of course. And we give the words also to Germany and Italy, because there was uh, also a resistance against fascism in Germany and in Italy. And for us, it's very, very important, because we, we believe that uh, history must be used to uh, to create friendship, to create um, the, the feelings of a shared history uh, and not to uh, separate uh, peoples. Then I'm very glad to be here. Um, I'm ready to answer to your questions if you have. Thank you. Thank you, Monsieur Jupar, and now Mr. Dmitro Chistiak, writer, the assistant to the French Philology Chair in Shevchenko University. My presentation will be very brief. I would like just to say that I am really grateful to the Embassy of Belgium in Ukraine, to the Royal Academy of French Language and Literature in Belgium, to the Ministry of Culture in Belgium for the support that we feel working on disseminating French literature in Ukrainian language. And one of the uh, evidences of that cooperation were the issues number 9 and 10 of Obsessuit magazine, where for the first time the novel of Marseille by Marcel Thierry was published uh, and that is the novel of the times of the First World War, and Marcel Thierry was the participant of that war. He was uh, fighting um, during Brusilov uh, uh, breakthrough during the attack of Kerensky, and he was uh, fighting in the Belgium armored division. The novel was written 10 years after the events, and uh, it uh, quite subjectively but very interestingly describes the events of Ukrainian revolution as well as the attack of Muravyov and Bolshevik terror in 1917 in Kiev, because that was when Marcel Thierry was in Kiev and we, he was hiding in the uh, St. Michael's um, Monastery, and thanks to the support of the Embassy of Belgium, uh, to the left from the uh, monument uh, uh, to the victims of Holodomor, the commemorative plug uh, was open uh, to Marcel Thierry, with a quotation from that novel. Also tomorrow, in the summit, uh, 
publishing house uh, this novel will be published and we believe this is just the first step uh, to understanding the figure of Marcel Thierry because the Ukrainian topic was uh, feeding up his uh, works uh, uh, especially in his uh, latest work, Le Voacte, uh, which is so interesting for uh, translation. And I hope that our cooperation in uh, translating the uh, Belgium literature into Ukrainian will continue. And thanks to the cooperation with the composer, Mr. Volodymyr Guba, on the 31st of March, we invite you all to the House of Actors, to the e, to the concert of the musical works uh, uh, which uh, uh, are composed to the words of some of Belgium writers, including uh, Marcel Thierry. So, your questions, please. It's Media Center. I have a very practical question, so anybody can answer it. Well, um, according to, to tomorrow's conference, when one can find a detailed program of this conference about what people will uh, will talk tomorrow, and another question probably to Dmitro, um, to Dmitro, uh, how many books of Michel Thierry are already translated into Ukrainian until now? Thank you. I have copies of the program here. I can give them to you. Um, we don't have a website, but we have email addresses. Um, you can find those email addresses also in the program of the Festival of the Days of Francophonie, um, because the e events are part of that festival, the events this month. But um, after the press conference, I will distribute prog uh, all the programs and press releases for all those who are interested. Ну і як ви здогадалися, йдеться про перший переклад творів Марселя Тірі українською мовою, тому as you might guess, this is the first translation of Marcel Thierry uh, work into Ukrainian and we hope that there will be continuation of it. Since there are no further questions, thank you very much for coming. We wish you success with the conference and uh,